Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Community Fortress. This is the Fortress of Green Reward, sent into the series by Candlepin. Now, this fortress is, as they state, their oldest fortress they've run. It's 46 years old, and they still have some projects left, but I think that the layout of it is quite unique, and I think that the setup is pretty cool looking, so we're going to have to dive in and take a look at that. But before I do anything else, if you would like to uh, send in a save for me to have a peek at on this series, simply join my Discord. Link is down in the description of this video. Uh, and then in there, there is a room called the DF Save Sharing Room. Simply zip the save file you wish to share, rename it, of course, so that it's easier for me, and then uh, upload it with a couple of screenshots, and just make sure that you include with your message that it's okay for me to use it in a video and then I'm much more likely to have a peek at it although um, if you don't say that it's okay to use it in a video I won't have a peek at it at all so it's a very good idea that you do um, all that being said uh, Candlepin here has sent in this little fortress of the Mute Manor, uh, a member of the Glaze of Riddles, a dwarven civilization. At the very end of this video, uh, there will be a couple of screenshots of Stone Sense of the game running in a isometric view. If you would like to have a look at that, simply wait until the end. Now, we are going to dive in and take a peek. So as of immediately when I looked at this fortress for the first time, I was like, oh crap, where's the front door? Uh, it was kind of hard for me to find it, and honestly, it still kind of is. Uh, there's a lot of open space here but it's very well hidden. Like when you zoom out, it just kind of looks like a mountain. I really like fortresses like this with kind of a stealth entrance, sort of, so, or so to speak. Uh, we have a little windmill set up right there. Then over here we have this kind of area. And then this kind of looks like it's gonna be an entrance, but this is actually the entrance. Uh, it kind of goes this way along this walkway and then it turns into a road. And then the road goes all the way over here. And well, to nothing. So then is that not the entrance? No, the entrance is uh, over here. <laughs> like I said, it just kind of goes everywhere. We got this little bronze bridge, which locks the front door. And then we have these ramps that go down here that then go down to here to a little trading depot. And then we have a collection of traps that go down through another ramp. I do like the, the little tips of the blades sticking out. It, it really makes the weapon trap seem very unique. I'm a big fan of the weapon traps. I should build them more. We have a nice little entryway here. And then I'm convinced that this is a constructed cavern. And I think I've talked about this before. One of my favorite things ever are players who make their own cavern layers. Dig down to the cavern layers, get all the nice mushrooms and everything and the umber lichen, and then dig around in it and then make these little cavern things. This is just way too cool looking. Um, just this kind of underground river thing with uh, just all of the, un the under lichen growing and all of the... You know, the goblin caps and your tower caps and the big trees and all that. It just looks so cool. Uh, down here we have a tiny little day site set of walls uh, that is uh, used for a lava, um, what, what's it called? A magma forge. Uh, one layer down here, if I hit Z, of course we can see the, the Muffin of Earth, which is a very good tavern name. Of course, very good tavern names here. I'm a big fan. Uh, and then over here we have the Cathedral of Granite. Uh, we have uh, a hospital overlapping with, I'm assuming... A doc, yes, a doctor guild hall. And uh, then up here we have a tiny little place called the Armor of Rooks, uh, which is a potter guild hall. And uh, we have this very large tomb. Keep in mind, uh, tombs only work, only work if there's only one coffin per tomb. So this tomb only has one dwarf buried in it, and that's it. And that's the, the Baron, um, which leads to it being a little bit of a concern. However, one layer down, they do have all of these kind of separate um, dugout areas, which look quite nice, actually. I've seen this style once or twice before, and then I guess once it's done, they just put a grate over top of it to kind of seal it off, which is a neat way of doing things. Um, and then, of course, they're just filling the rest of the tomb up with the um, bits that will actually work. Just keep in mind that they'll only use one of these coffins. Then over here we have some more temples, uh, and then a little barracks thingy in the middle, and then a dining hall. I kind of love the chaotic, like, multi-layer nature of this fortress. It's it's really kind of neat to me. Uh, more temples, of course, around the edges, uh, full of little trapdoors, and the little trapdoors lead down to these bedrooms, which have windows going into each other? I mean, imagine just, like, getting to stare at your neighbor. <laughs> It's kind of a neat idea, but uh, looks cool. Um, very neat setup for those for those uh, trapdoor floors. I, I did one fort once where every it was like a three. It was an above ground fort, and the, the 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 housing blocks were like these three layer things. So the first layer the first layer of floors were like one layer down underground in the dirt with like met, with I think metal and stone floors and walls. 
kind of built around it. And then I had trapdoors going down in a very similar style to this, except kind of in a straight line. And then I also built up two layers above it. So there was one just like, it was basically trapdoor on one layer. And then on the same layer was a set of doors to those bedrooms. And then one layer above was the upper layer. And then one layer above that was the upper, upper layer. And they ended up looking really cool. I was a big fan of that fort, but... This is a neat way of doing it, especially down through the different temples. Um, and then over here, of course, we got more of that kind of bedroom set up. Very compact and, like, space, space efficient. I, I like it. Um, and then there's this kind of neat thing in the middle, which I'm not sure what it's for right now. Um, yeah, it just looks like more coffins from the looks of things. Uh, kind of confusing to look at a little bit, but very cool. Very, very, very cool. Uh, and then in the center over here, we have uh, this kind of little place called the Steel of Cresting, uh, which is a stoneworker guild hall. I love the multicoloredness as well. Uh, it gets even more chaotic as we go further down, um, but still real cool. Lots of dining rooms, uh, some assigned to dwarves, some just general dining rooms. And then up here, we have uh, an office. Uh, this dwarf over here, Mincot, definitely needs a, another cabinet in their life because uh, they're leaving clothing everywhere. Same same with this dwarf. This dwarf might just be a messy baron, though. Uh, and then as we move down a layer, uh, there is a bigger office down here as well as those coffins, and then even more coffins, and then, well, obviously, even more coffins. Uh, and it just kind of keeps going. And then we have ramps going down uh, as things go. Um, then right here, there is uh, just kind of a spot just full of corpses. I'm not entirely sure what... How, how they're getting those bodies down there. Maybe they're just throwing them down there. Uh, it doesn't, uh, there doesn't appear to be a garbage dump any, oh, there we go. So there's a garbage dump that's thrown down here and then I'm assuming that this is connected to a lever somewhere, gotcha. Then they pull the lever and then everything falls down into there. Well, that fits. Uh, and then down here we have ramps going down, 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 down and into the caverns. Uh, and then more ramps going down, 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 down to even more caverns. So this area down here looks kind of lovely as far as I'm concerned, and uh, we can go even further. Even further. Down, 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 down. And it goes all the way down through the magma sea until it hits uh, an area where they get stuck. Um, just trying to see how far they can get, I suppose. Uh, no chipping away at uh, valuable um, places just yet. Uh, mostly just kind of sees like they've just they just started scratching the surface of digging into those um, mysterious walls studded with gems. Um, although they did kind of um, start digging in here a little bit. And now this is where we hit spoilers territory. So I'm going to talk about strats for a little bit. And this is a strategy that I use when digging too deeply and greedily. If you fortify uh, adamantine by smoothing it using the smoothing tool like this, and then right after using this tool like this, um, they can then peek in, right? So this allows them to peek in, and then you can see all kinds of hidden fun stuff um, of hell. Uh, and um, the all kinds of hidden fun stuff can't get out because they will be stuck just behind that fortification wall, allowing you to properly prepare and be ready to fight them uh, before uh, the actual, you know, uh, battle begins. So you can set up like tunnels and whatnot and all of the things that you might need to give yourself as good of a chance as possible to fight against these things. And because they can't actually get out, this is not going to impact your frame rate at all. Okay, so keep that in mind. But uh, that kind of is this lovely little fortress. I One thing I really want to do before I do anything else is I'm going to swap this over to ASCII and just take a peek at this. Because I feel like that this bedroom layout might just look like absolute colorful, beautiful chaos. So let's just take a peek at it, shall we? Look at this. Oh, that is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I know some people still can't wrap their head around ASCII, but I love the way this fortress looks. This is beautiful. Well done. Well done, Green Reward, the mountain home. You are a beautiful fortress. I would like to, I'd, I'd like to see more fortresses in this style. And also, I want to build fortress, fortresses in this style now. Like, my God, let's let's do a surface cavern. God, that's so cool. So goddamn cool. Uh, for those of you who've been watching this channel for a little bit now, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's been watching these videos. And if you really enjoyed that Let's Play series that I did, I'm working on a new one. I've generated a world for it. I've started working on episode one, but it's going to be a little bit before it comes out. And as for these videos, this series is just going to continue as long as people keep sending me uh, screenshots and fortresses to have a look at. And I... I'm kind of hitting a wall with creativity for uh, tutorials for a little bit, so uh, there might be some more advanced stuff on here in the future after I get kind of uh, maybe a month's break between cramming out 50 or so in a month uh, between the launch of the game and uh, now. So what I'm going to say is 
If you like this channel and you want to continue seeing videos on this channel, which you will because I'm not going to stop uploading regardless, so don't consider this blackmail, check out my merch store, uh, you, which you can do on the screen right now. If you stick around for a couple more seconds, uh, there will be some screenshots of this fortress running in stone sense. So if you want to check out my merch store, we have a mug, we have a t-shirt, we have a hoodie, we have various other things that could be kind of interesting to you. And uh, till next time, I hope you enjoy the screenshots. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.